you hear me just write number one, if you hear me just write number one. Hi, salam alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, all of the guys, I'd like you uh, just sharing me in this presentation. We are here to learn together about something which is new and something which is really important in our deen or our religion. So uh, I'd like all of you to share me uh, every step here. And inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, we go inshallah hit the point we are willing, inshallah. Okay, so uh, I wish that my voice is clear for each one, for everyone here. And uh, inshallah, uh, I'm gonna inshallah uh, start now with the Tahiyatul Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, I'd like to uh, greet you all and I'd like to present you uh, and uh, say Eid Mubarak for everyone here. Because uh, uh, the Eid, the one of the our pillars of Islam, Al Hajj is one of the our, the our pillars of Islam. And this Eid actually, which is Eid al Adha, is uh, the most highest Eid because this is actually the Eid of the, has a long story. It's not like Eid al Fitri after uh, Shah Ramadani. So it's not like Eid al Fitri is like a real Eid here. This is a Eid which has a long story. And um, Al Hajj, it is not like uh, some acts we are doing, or some acts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them for us but to do. No, every act in Al Hajj or every uh, farth in Al Hajj, every pillar in Al Hajj. So this is a pillar which happened before. This pillar is refers for something which is really important. So inshallah today, we gonna inshallah know everything about Al Hajj, about uh, the pillars of Al Hajj, and what is the story of Ismail, and what is the relation of Ismail alayhi salam uh, to Al Hajj. Okay, uh, inshallah, the, uh, in our character, inshallah, today, or in our story today, inshallah, we have like main characters, which is the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam and the Prophet Ismail alayhi salam and his mother Hajar alayhi salam. Okay, the story starts when Ibrahim alayhi salam was 80 years old. Like in the past, it doesn't like a long age. Actually, it doesn't like a big age. He just like a young man. But uh, you know, the our father Adam, the father of humanity, he was uh, he lived for one thousand years, and Noah alayhi salam he lived for nine hundred years fifty, and also all of the other prophets after that, their age just comes down, down, down to the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Uh, uh, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, the history tellers say that uh, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam lived for 180 years. So it's a, a really long. So when he was just 80 years, like he was in his uh, middle of his age, and he was not really, really young. He was really young, actually. So... It started the story when the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam was eight years old, and after that he wasn't having a child. He was marrying Ummul Mu'minina Sarah, the mothers of believers, Sarah. And Sarah at the time wasn't given a bear, wasn't given a child. So uh, why Ibrahim alayhi salam was fighting with his people because their people, or sorry, his people were worshipping idols. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders him to just visit Egypt. And he, while he visited Egypt, so uh, the king gave him or give his wife uh, Hajar alayhi salam as a servant. A servant uh, is not a slave, is not a slave. Servant is just someone like a babysitter, someone who is helping you. But we are calling servant in, uh, in Islam as this is the word that the Arab people uh, talk about or use uh, in that time. So the king of Egypt gave Hajar to Sarah to help her in her life stuff. And after that, the uh, Prophet, uh, she offered Sarah herself, offered to the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, 
to just marry Sarah, to marry Hajar, to just give birth, because Sarah doesn't able or didn't able to give birth actually. So Ibrahim uh, Ibrahim accepted this offer actually. So he it wasn't his decision actually. It was the decision of his wife Sarah. So the Prophet Ibrahim accepted this offer, and after he accepted this offer, so Hajar bear Ismail as a child baby in her stomach. After that, after she bear Ismail, so there is no jealous actually happened. Like at some months, said uh, Sarah feel jealous from Hajar and something like that. No, it doesn't happen actually. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala at the uh, at the age of Ismail, while the, the Ismail at the age of six months actually just six months, he was like a baby. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala ordered Ibrahim alayhi salam to just take Hajar and Ismail to a specific place. So this is called the Hijra. And Hijra, all of the prophets of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did Hijra for everywhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered all of the prophets, sallallahu, all of the prophets to do Hijra to just for something, for the aim, actually. So while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Ibrahim to take Hajar and his and his son Ismail, he was a baby, to a place, Ibrahim uh, wasn't know the place actually. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him to the place. And while after a long walk, it, it lasts for about th uh, two months actually. So after a long walk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to just stay in this place. This place actually, you see, it was like a desert. Nothing here, nothing for life stops here. Everything here is just like a sand and it's just like a sky. Nothing here actually to do. There is no life science here. So everything uh, uh, doesn't have, have anything to live here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to stay here to leave them here so all of this sign Hajar alayhi salam didn't ask Ibrahim or uh, we can call it uh, call him Abraham as in Syrianic language and Abraham was speaking Syrianic some uh, something said that so in Syrianic language is Abraham but in Islam or in Arabic we say Ibrahim so Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, tried to live to them and Till this point, Hajar salam, didn't ask Ibrahim why we are coming here. Till this point, because Hajar knows that Ibrahim alayhi salam, just worshiping Allah, just obeying Allah, and he didn't do anything, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him. So while Ibrahim alayhi salam, trying to live, to leave them, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Hajar started to ask Ibrahim alayhi salam, is your God, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered you to leave us here. So Ibrahim alayhi salam turned it and give her, give her his back and tell her that, yes. He didn't say yes. He just make this with his head, okay? So the, uh, a, the story starts with the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam dreamed that he was walking to this place and he leaving his son. He leaving his wife in this place alone, nothing there. And all of the dreams of the prophets and all of the dreams, all of the messengers are a message from Allah. It's called a, a something or a shape of revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So while, while Ibrahim alayhi salam dreamed so, he just obey and apply the dream of our, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to them and he go to this journey and leave them in that place. Okay. And um, after that, uh, while, he, while they arrived to this place, no cultivated life, no fruits, no water, nothing but sand and sky, sand and sky, sun everywhere, nothing to give like a shelter there to just cover them from a son. Uh, when Ibrahim alayhi salam left them, as I told you, Hajar asked him about that and he uh, answered yes, saying, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders me to leave you here. So she answered in a plea of heart, a plea of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying, then he will not neglect us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't forget us. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, while he leaving them, he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Oh Allah, I was leave my family in a, in a desert, nothing there for livestock. I'd like you to just give them all of the livestock. I'd like you to send to them the people. I'd like him to send to them the people who are caring. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, it like, Accept all of the du'a of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So the du'a of Ibrahim alayhi salam mentioned in Quran, in Surah to, uh, uh, Al-A'raf. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Oh our Lord, I have made some of my offspring jewel in a valley without cultivation by your scared house, sacred, ha- scared ha- sacred house, which is Al-Kaaba. Al-Kaaba at that time, wasn't existed actually. It was like a desert. Al Kaaba, the Adam alayhi salam, at the beginning of the humanity in the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to build Al Kaaba. But after many of centuries, the sand destroyed Al Kaaba, the uh, sorry, the winds destroyed Al Kaaba, the sand is covered it. So there is no Al Kaaba at that time. While people passed by this valley, this valley was really important, and but while people passed it, uh, passed it this by this valley, so but they can't see it. Why? Because there is no Kaaba sand discovered there. So after that, Ibrahim asked Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to give or uh, to give them all of the life stuffs to send to send to him to send to them. People um, uh, which have a really kind hearts to just carry them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts his dua. And after it starts the, the acceptance of the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam, it starts while Ibrahim left. Do you know, this is the fast, the fast of acceptance of dua from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the dua of the prophets fast? Why? Because the prophets has pleaded in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The prophets had pleaded in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a real heart. They can't feel like any uh, doubt in answering of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by your plea gives you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by your plea, he makes your dua acceptance get fast. So this is the way. So while Ibrahim get believe in his God and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept his dua fast. While Ibrahim lifted them in the same day, the water and the food stuffs dried. So while Ismail alayhi salam started to cry, he was thirsty, he was hungry, and Hajar alayhi salam, there is no food to eat to just uh, like feeding Ismail alayhi salam. Ismail was a baby, he was feeding from his, wa- from his mom. So she needs to have eat, to have food. She needs to have some stuff to eat. There is nothing to eat. So she tried to search about water in this big valley, in this big desert, nothing. Nothing there. While you find the water, so you find the plants. While you find the water, so there is a plants around the water, actually. So she tried, uh, the Ibrahim alayhi salam, left her beside As-Safa. Left her beside mountain As-Safa. Mountain As-Safa is beside the Al-Kaaba Valley. So Al-Kaaba is this valley and As-Safa here, Al-Marwa there. So As-Safa and Al-Marwa there and Al-Kaaba here. So Ibrahim alayhi salam lifted them behind As-Safa and Hajar alayhi salam started to go between As-Safa and Al-Marwa, the another mountain. 
So she started to go and back, go and back, searching about water everywhere. So she was going up or above the mountain and look around to see water, but there is no water actually. So she, after seven times of searching, going and back seven times, you have to understand and you have to know this, all of the things that we're going to mention, it happens in al Hajj pillars actually. So. You have to remember every point that I'm going to explain. So after seventh time of going and pack, so there is angel Gabriel came. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to him. So when the angel Gabriel came, so he, uh, he told her that, are you searching about water? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me to you to help you. And while Ismail, while he's a baby, he's just like a small baby here. So while Ismail, like he is moving his leg, so he just hit the ground with his leg. So the water actually flooded. While the water flooded, so the Hajar alayhi salam started saying what? Started saying Zimmi, Zimmi. So this is the name of Zamzam. Zamzam is a well beside Al Kaaba. And Zamzam doesn't dry it yet. It won't dry it yet. This is Allah's promise for the people. So it won't dry it yet. So while Hajar say Zimmi, Zimmi, it was means in her language at that time, like, come on, don't go away. I need you. She think that the, the water may go away, doesn't come again. It might be dry. So she told him Zimmi, Zimmi. So we called here this well beside Al Kaaba, Zamzam. So Zamzam is beside Al Kaaba and it comes from the leg of Ismail and this uh, this name is called by Hajar and Zimmi means stop, come here, come around, don't go away, I need you. Okay, so um, the angel Gabriel السلام, told her, don't be afraid Hajar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't neglect you. For this house, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this baby and his father, Ibrahim alayhi salam, will build Allah's house. And he referred for her, this is the point of Allah's house. And Ismail raised up and Hajar teached him step by step how the life comes. How the life comes while a woman and a baby in a really big desert. No, no one to help her. No one to just care about her. But this is the plea of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when these, when those people believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, really believe, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them. So after that, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when uh, there is a beside them a tribe at that time there is a, where beside them a tribe in the valley of Mecca there is a tribe called Jur, Juram okay this this tribe actually know that there is no life in this valley valley of Mecca where, where Ibrahim alayhi salam left Ismail and Hajar so there is no life science in this valley and all of the people know that because they are making a trade between Iraq and between uh, Sham, Palestine, so, and they passed by Mecca, so actually there is no life science here. So they know that. So while they are, uh, while the uh, spring of water come, so the birds come, the plants come. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the dua of Ibrahim at the same time. It doesn't take any while. So, the water come, the plants come, Hajar start to eat fruit, to eat every kind of the stuffs of food, like that time happened. So she started to eat. She started to feed Ismail. She started to drink water from the well. And while that happened, so all of the parents came in this place. While all of the tribes see the parents go to this place, they know that there is a water in this place, actually. Because, you know, the, uh, all of the tribe of, the, uh, of that time were searching about the well of the water and just came beside it. So while this will dry, so 
the solution about another well, actually. So they are all the time uh, looking and know that wild birds ca came to the place, so there is a life for this place. So the birds doesn't go to a desert to live there. They go to the um, uh, uh, the water place, the plant place. So while they saw the, uh, the birds, so they started to go to this place to search, to find out why birds go there. They found out Hajar, they found out Ismail, found out water, plants, and every life stuff. How come we are basing by this place every time and we didn't find anything actually? So how can we, how can we find these things actually? They started to love baby Ismail and offered to Hajar to just live with her as they think this is the place of Hajar. So they are to care permission to live with them. So after that, Hajar accepted. So do you think after you wear no shelter, no people, no th nothing for livestock, the people came to you to just ask your permission to live with you. And this is what, what I'm calling the, the fast of acceptance of Ibrahim's prey. Then Ismail uh, uh, grew up between these tribes. These tribes were uh, speaking Arabic, and Ismail uh, tried to speak Arabic and learned how to speak Arabic from them, and to learn it from his mother to speak Syrianic. So Ismail was speaking two languages. So while uh, uh, Ismail grew up, he married a woman from this tribe, and while this time, Ibrahim alayhi salam was making visiting between time to time to Ismail and his mom Hajar alayhi salam. The point here, Sarah, Sarah, the first wife of Ibrahim alayhi salam, gave another child for Ibrahim. She won't give a child. She won't able to. She has something like false things to can't give, to can't give a child. So how's it come? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts her dua. So he gave her a child which is called Isaac, and we called him in Arabic Ishaq. So Isaac or Ishaq in Arabic, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Ibrahim another one. After a long years, he doesn't have a child, he now has two child. But one live far away, and the, another one he lived with him. Okay? And, um, after that, in this time, in this period, Ibrahim was visiting or do, did visiting for Ismail alayhi uh, salam for uh, at the Mecca time, at the Mecca place. And while Ibrahim was doing visiting for Ismail, he was teaching them and he was telling them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, decisions and everything like that. So Ismail alayhi salam at this time, uh, Allah subhanahu uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam ordered, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sorry, ordered Ibrahim alayhi salam to build Al Kaaba. Uh, after Ismail was like uh, a youth, he was about 20 years old. So Ibrahim alayhi, uh, 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 Ibrahim alayhi salam started to build Al Kaaba with his son Ismail. And this is the uh, perfection. Or the prophecy, the prophecy of the angels came to Hajar while the Ismail was a child and told her that this baby and his father will build at the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sacred house. So Ibrahim alayhi salam told Ismail that we have to build Al Kaaba and we have to raise it. Actually, Adam, the first one who built it, and the, then after that, Ibrahim and Ismail started to raise it up again to start to appear for a people. Okay, so they started to build a Kaaba together. When Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was like a really old in this time. So, but Ismail, he was a, a youth, or he was a man. He has a strong. So. In nowadays, so it's uh, uh, like uh, best days, so Ismail was able to build a Kaaba. So Ibrahim alayhi salam here started to get this tune, do you see? This tune, 
and start to stand on to just try to build Al Kaaba. And this is the footprint of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And this is now exists beside Al Kaaba in a lantern. So we're gonna we're gonna see inshallah uh, now the picture of Al Kaaba and the lantern and everything actually. Okay, Al Kaaba actually they started to uh, build it. They built all of Al Kaaba and they just leave something or a part of from Al Kaaba. We're gonna talk about it later. So this part they can't to build it. There is no stone, there is no start to build this part, actually. Okay, and they raised it actually till they can, but they didn't complete this part. Okay, both of them started to stay or to pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying, Oh, our Lord, accept this service, the service of building a Kaaba. So they are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them to build a Kaaba, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept their service. Do you see? This is the meaning of worshipping for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While you know Allah, so you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can't be like, uh, you can't be, be astray from Allah. You have to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every way, in every act. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Ibrahim as to call everyone for al-hajj. Ibrahim got amazed. How can I call everyone for Al-Hajj? Some people are living in this valley, actually. No one actually live, like, you can say, like, 20 people live in this in this place. So how I can make a then, how I can ask people to come, or how can I call people? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran, وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بالحج. So all of these questions, doesn't come at the head of Ibrahim, but we are asking. But Ibrahim know that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered, so he have to accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order. So so Ibrahim is starting to call people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his call and send all of the people to this place. Till now all of the people come to this place. Till now, even of Corona, so this place it doesn't it doesn't get in embry. So this place it just all the time has people work in this place, praying in this place. So this is the du'a of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And after that, um, this is the first incident of uh, building Al Kaaba. The second incident, the second visiting. Ibrahim alayhi salam was dreamed and we are know that while the Prophet dreamed, so this dreaming actually is a message from Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam or the Prophet alayhi salam, Master of Allah. So when Ibrahim dreamed Allah with this dream, what is this dream? Ibrahim alayhi salam was dreamed that he was sacrificing his child Ismail, his son sorry Ismail. After after that long journey, he was sacrificing his son Ismail. This is a big test. This is what we call Ibrahim, the father of the prophets. Because Ibrahim, he is like all of the prophets came after him. Most of the prophets came after him, which the Quran mentioned. So all of them came from Ibrahim. And actually, actually, I like to tell you the most the highest one who has ibtila after after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Ibrahim alayhi salam. So Ibrahim alayhi salam all of the time dreaming that he is slaughtering his son Ismail. It doesn't uh, goes up from his sleeping like he is dream again and again again. So he know that this message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was in Palestine. He go to his son Ismail to Mecca, while where the Ismail alayhi salam lived. So he was telling them, oh my son, I'd like to tell you something. They say, okay, dad, I, I'm here, I'm listening. So 
So he told him that I have a dream that I'm slaughtering you. And uh, without any hesitation, uh, without any hesitation from Ismail salam, Ibrahim starts, uh, Ismail told his father, you have to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered you. The father is telling his son that I'm going to slaughter you. And the son accepted. The son without hesitation knew that this is order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he had to do this command. So he, ha- he told his father just to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered you. Actually, they all prepared himself, themselves and the story came in the Quran and Ismail told the father Ibrahim alayhi salam was some things. The first, just tied me, but tied my hands, tied my feet to just you not know, like uh, while you are slaughtering me, I may move my hand, move my leg, so my blood may be like come to you and hurt you and you are uh, don't apply this acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so just tied me up and make my face to the ground make my face to the ground then start to slaughter me why Allah subhanahu why uh, Ismail told his father to make his face to the ground to while Ismail while Ismail uh, while Ibrahim slaughtering so he will see the face of his son. So he, it hurts him when he's saying that he's a slaughtering and his son is looking to him. So Ismail told him, so just give my face to the ground. Put my face to the ground. So they are coming and they are going to the place which we they have to do this slaughtering. They are go far away from Mecca somehow and they are going to do slaughtering and while Ibrahim alayhi salam is slaughtering angel Gabriel came to Ibrahim stop Ibrahim you are applied the dream this is a dream and you are applied there this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you apply there this is a really really big test while someone is slaughtering his son you can't feel it actually but the really, it's a really big test, and they are two. Uh, they are there actually, Ibrahim and Ismail. So, Angel Gabriel came to them, handing a sheep or a ram, small sheep actually. So he gave him the sheep for Ibrahim and asking him to slaughter the sheep uh, in place of Ismail alayhi salam. And from this time, this. Sacrifice Eid coming. The sacrifice Eid we are celebrating because of Ismail. We are celebrating because of our father Ibrahim acceptance for God subhanahu wa ta'ala, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salam doesn't feel hesitation to just uh, like apply subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order. And he is a fully readiness to just make this order from uh, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, keeping Ismail for Ibrahim, so they started to pray Al-Kaaba together. And uh, while they pray Al-Kaaba, I told you that Ibrahim felt like uh, he, he was... Uh, really old, so he felt uh, he felt like exhausted. So he sit down and using this tool which I showed you, and he stands on the stool to build the Al Kaaba to make it higher as he can. So the feet the feet print of Ibrahim alayhi salam in this stool and it existed beside Al Kaaba. Okay, while they are were building Al Kaaba, they were uh, like. Uh, do you um, collected all of the stones to build Al Kaaba, but they can't find more stones to make the uh, uh, the whole building of Al Kaaba. Al Kaaba it is not that building that we are seeing now. This is a part of Al Kaaba. The black building we are seeing now. This is a part of Al Kaaba. 
and another part of Al Kaaba is this place. You see, this place I'm referring now. This is a part of Al Kaaba actually. This is round the place, and this is called Hijru Ismail, Ismail's lab. Hijru Ismail means that this is what Ismail alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam built Al Kaaba with Ismail, and Ismail tried to build this lab, but he can't find the stuff to build this uh, part. So it's called Hijru Ismail. Okay, from this story, we get a shape of acceptance for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have not to hesitate. We have not to hesitate to accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders. Okay, for al Kaaba, all of the prophets came after Ibrahim alayhi salam make hajj for al Kaaba. Because Ibrahim alayhi salam raised it up and all of the people know it. So all of the prophets alayhi, uh, uh, alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them to go there and make hajj. Okay, so um, I'd like to tell you that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did hajj in his life just once, one time. As the last year of al hijrah before his death, before his death directly. So he just did one Hajj in his life. Okay, so what is Al Hajj actually? I told you about Al Hajj. And we have like a pillars of Al Hajj. What are the pillars of Al Hajj? The pillars of Al Hajj, I'd like to mention you the pillars which came from the story of Hajar alayhi salam and the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. The first thing is so circling seven times around Al Kaaba, okay, and this came after Ibrahim and Ismail built Al Kaaba, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala ordered them to do this act around Al Kaaba. So the second is to go between Al Safa and Al Marwa. So Al Safa and Al Marwa because the Hajar Umm Al Mu'minin, the mothers of believers, go or go back and go on between Safa and Al Marwa to just seven times to just like to say uh, searching about water from Ismail to feed him uh, at the story we mentioned at the beginning. So this is a third pillar of Al Kaaba. The uh, uh, we have another pillar which is standing upon the Arafat. Arafat is the mountain which is uh, Adam and Eve recognize each other upon. So we are in this uh, in this uh, pillar Al Hajj. We all remember it. our Adam, uh, our father Adam, and uh, our mother Eve. We are recognizing each others upon this place, upon this mountain. So are we all going up this mountain? So such happened. Al Hajj happened on the tenth day of the Hijjah this month, actually. Okay, so the Al-Hajj starts tomorrow, inshallah. Al-Hajj starts tomorrow. And tomorrow is the day of Arafah. Arafah is the day of, like, this is the day actually where uh, when Adam, alayhi salam, recognized Hawa. When, Ad, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Adam and Hawa, Adam and Eve down to the earth, Adam was in India. And Eve, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sent her in Saudi Arabia. Adam walked from India searching about Hawa till he reached Saudi Arabia on the mountain of Arafat. So we are uh, in this day, 10th of Dhul Hijjah, Adam recognized Hawa. So we are, well, we are standing on this mountain on this day because we are just celebrating the day which, uh, where, when Adam recognized on Hawa, 10th of the Hijjah. And this is the last month in Islamic calendar, okay? And also, I'd like uh, to tell you, which is to stand on Arafat. This is the fifth pillar of Al-Hajj. Uh, uh, sorry, Al-Hajj is the fifth, uh, the fifth pillar of the Islam. Why the Hajj is the fifth pillar of the Islam? The, we have five pillars of Islam. The first one is Shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. The second pillar is you have to establish prayer. The, uh, after that, you have to fast Ramadan. After that, 
paying zakah or alms, given alms. And the last one is al-hajj. So al-hajj is the last pillar. And al-hajj is a fard, is obligatory. So is obligated upon everyone has and offers the money to just go to do al-hajj. When someone has the money to don't do al-hajj, so he now do a sin, actually. Why right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you this money to do al-hajj. And you didn't do, and al-hajj is a pillar, al-hajj is obligatory, so you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gonna punish you. You know, you have to do al-hajj since you have the money to do. Okay, after that, how can we do al-hajj? As I told you, there is a lot of deeds, there is a lot of pillars of al-hajj, and I don't want to go inside these pillars, but I, men I mentioned the pillars which happened between the story, from the story of Ibrahim and Ismail and Hajar, and uh, we are uh, doing sacrificing. The people who can't visit al-Kaaba and do al-hajj, and they are able to do sacrifice, like a ram, like Jibreel sent the ram to Ibrahim. So we have to be a ram and to slaughter ram. So this is also a kind of acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is, is called a tradition of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we have to accept it and do it actually. Okay. So, uh, I'd like to tell you what are the benefits of Arafah and how can I spend the day of Arafah. Okay, the day of Arafah starts from the uh, starts from today, inshallah, the tenth day of the Hijjah. And how can we start the day? How can we do the uh, right deeds in this day? We have to at the first start our day with my prayers before Al Fajr. And we have to do like at least, at least eight rak'ah. And Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, told the people, if the one who is doing like 12 rak'ah at night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala built him a house in the heavens. So try to do 12 rak'ah. Even with short ayahs, with short verses, even you are holding the mushaf I read and try to do just the 12 rak'ah. How can I do 12 rak'ah? Two raka, then tahiyat, two raka, then tahiyat, two raka, then tahiyat. Every two raka are separately. Okay? So you are doing it, you are doing them separately. And, uh, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gonna reward you. After doing these 12 raka, how could I do? Uh, so you have to go to masjid praying al fajr prayer. And after that, sitting in the masjid, try to sit in the masjid. Or if you can't sit in the masjid, come to your home and do adhkar till the uh, sun raised. Okay? So when the sun raised, so you all can do two rak'ah of prayers as a sunnah or a tradition of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after that, you are go to sleep till a lot of time. And I wish if you don't sleep, I wish if you are able to just walk into just open your mushaf and reading. Do you know the deeds of Arafah is really, really important. And the most important deed of Arafah is fasting. If you are fasting the day of Arafah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you, forgive you a year later of sins and a year upcoming year of sins. Do you know two years of sins are gonna be forgiven for you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you all of these stuff to just Worship Allah to just know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you a lot of prizes, a lot of rewards, and you actually have to accept. You actually have to accept it for yourself, not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't obligate you to do all of the steps. He just obligate you to do fasting, to do salat, to give the care, to do al hajj if you can, just if you can. If you have the money to go al hajj, you have to go al hajj so you have three pillars to do they are not big they are not really hard you are doing uh, just fasting one month a year only one month a year you are just being zakah while you are able to pay zakah so this is a lot of halal ta'ala rewards for us so we are just praying so make prayer make prayers are uh, you is uh, are you worshiping 
you have to worship Allah with praying, with holding Mus'haf a weed in his Mus'haf. One harf in the Mus'haf, one letter in the Mus'haf gives you like 10 rewards, 10 degrees. So try to read like three pages every day. Every day, three pages. Today, try to read a lot of pages. Try to read a lot of Quran as you can. Even if you can't, just open the audio and listening and reading with your eyes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can reward you. Actually, don't. Even you are, even you are just memorizing two surah or one surah, repeating it. Only one surah, repeating it. Do you know the value of the surah of Al-Ikhlas? ahad, A big value. If you are reading it three times and you don't know actually not no other surahs but this surah and you are reading it three times, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gonna give you the rewards if you read the whole of the Quran. Wow, big stuff actually. So you have to you have to go around and you have to hold your mushaf. Don't sleep in this day. Do a real fasting. The fasting must doesn't have any uh, bad uh, words actually. Don't make a bad speech with anyone. Just worshiping Allah in this day to forgive you. Upcoming year and the last year, forgive all of the sins for you. You are good that you are now, after you finish fasting of Arafah, so you are feel that you are now just poor. You are now, uh, no sins, man. You have a lot of rewards, only, only rewards, all of your sins deleted. And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards for us. And um, uh, at the end, I like to say I'm really glad because I was with you today and I wait on you. If there's anyone have any question here, just write in the chat box. I'm here to answer any question for just five minutes and leave inshallah after that. So if you have any question, just write me in the chat box to just answer it. Okay, if there, is, if there is anyone have any question, just write number one to e to just end our meeting. Okay, just write number one if you don't have any question, please. Bajazakum. Okay, bro brothers. So, um, uh, nice to meet you today. And uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good evening, Allah. 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 Good ev